Hi, welcome to today's session. My name is Luis Castillo and I'm technical manager at Optiv with our vulnerability management and remediation practice. Today, we'll discuss mitigating risks posed by threats and vulnerabilities using advanced remediation management. We'll have time for questions at the end of the presentation. Our objectives for today are to obtain a refresher on some basic definitions related to risk and vulnerabilities, to receive an overview of what remediation management is, and to gain an understanding of the R methodology, that is the advanced remediation management methodology and how you could apply it in your situation. Before we start, I wanted to review some basic definitions that you'll hear throughout this session. I am positive that most of you are quite familiar with them, but this refresher will help everybody get a baseline understanding of those definitions. We'll start with the definition of an asset. An asset is any data, device, or other component of an organization's systems that is valuable, either because of information that it contains or information that it can be used to access. Let's use some analogies and let's talk about cars. In this situation, an asset could be my car. That is a vehicle that takes me from point A to point B. But it can also be things that I leave inside my car, such as my phone, my wallet, or even my leather jacket. A vulnerability is a weakness within an information asset, procedure, control, or implementation of such control that could be exploited by a threat actor. In my example, a vulnerability could be the fact that I left my doors unlocked. A threat is a negative action or event that can create unwanted adverse impacts and consequences to information assets or services. A threat is my car can be stolen or the contents inside my car can be stolen. A threat actor is a state, group, or individual with malicious intent who aims to take advantage of vulnerabilities to cause harm. In my case, the threat actor could be that thief that has been casing my car since I parked it. An exploit is a tool, a program, or technique that is leveraged by threat actors to carry out an attack against a specific vulnerability. In my case, this could be as simple as somebody sending an accomplice to distract me so that that person can break into my car, or perhaps following a YouTube video on hot wire in my car. The risk is the potential for loss, damage, or destruction of assets or data caused by when a cyber threat exploits a vulnerability. We also commonly know the definition of risk as being the product of probability and impact. That is, how likely is this to occur? Very well. Now that we have a basic idea of the definitions we use, let's talk a little bit about the current threat landscape. When we turn on the news, we constantly see headlines like the ones showing on the slide right now. The past 10 or 15 years have really seen a dramatic increase in the number and sophistication of cyber attacks. And why is that? Well, advances in technology have certainly brought lots of benefits, like speed and convenience, and that makes businesses more profitable. But those advances in technology have also increased the complexity of our IT environment and that has resulted in an exponential rise in system and application vulnerabilities. When you combine that with global events such as a pandemic or a war, you also increase exposure, like having people working from home, and now criminals have different motivation, like targeting specific industries. Your vulnerability management program must include more robust remediation processes and practices to better respond to these threats. Let's recall what vulnerability management is. We'll define vulnerability management as a cyclical process of identifying, categorizing, prioritizing, 
and remediating operating system and application vulnerabilities. And that is to improve an organization's security posture. VM is a cycle. There's no such thing as once and done. When you think you have remediated your vulnerabilities, there will be a new bunch coming out that you'll have to deal with. It's just like car maintenance. If you want your car operating efficiently and safely, you have to do all those little things they tell you. Oil changes, tire rotations, alignments, brakes, tire replacements, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the steps in vulnerability management is remediation. And that will be the focus of this presentation. We'll define remediation as the act of eradicating or neutralizing vulnerabilities and threats detected in information assets. We can use the application of patches, the implementation of corrective actions, implementation of alternate mitigations, or we can do nothing and just accept the risk. Of course, we we'll prefer that to be a temporary solution. Now, you could include the application of software patches as part of the corrective actions, but I'm leaving that as a separate item right now just to draw a distinction between applying standard patches that are readily available and easy to implement, such as those published by Microsoft, and those remediation actions that require more analysis. Okay, so now we know what remediation is and what remediation options exist. But what is remediation management? And what is the ARM methodology? Let's dive into it by using an analogy or an example. In this analogy, we have three different assets, each with the same three critical vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities are cars unlocked, windows are open, and the keys are in the car. These are all considered critical vulnerabilities, all severity 10, and they all exist on each of the three assets that we have displayed. So what do we do? How do we deploy resources? And where do you deploy resources first? How do you manage this? Obviously, this is only three cars with only three vulnerabilities. And if I give this picture to a bunch of 10-year-olds, I guarantee that nine out of 10 will pick the cool-looking yellow Ferrari. That's just what they'll do. But in real life, we're not dealing with just three assets. Depending on the size of your company, you're dealing with 2,000, 10,000, 50,000 or more. That's a big difference. You're also not dealing with just nine vulnerabilities. You're dealing with thousands to hundreds of thousands of vulnerabilities across your environment. So I ask again, how do we manage this? Well, we need more information than just vulnerability severity, but what do we need? Let's, let's step through some of the things that we could use in our scenario. Let's start with asset criticality, and that is defined as the business value that an organization assigns to an asset. In our case, we can keep it simple and use a monetary value. I think that based on this metric, it's pretty obvious that I would prioritize the yellow Ferrari first. That has the biggest value. Now, this is not the only metric, the only factor that you can use. So let's take another look. Let's take a look at another factor. How about threat intelligence information? Now, the threat intelligence information that I gather from 2020 tells me that the Honda Civic was the number one most stolen car in America that year. It was somewhere north of 38,000 Civics that were stolen in 2020. Wow. Based on that metric, the Honda Civic should be my highest priority. But that's not the only metric we have. 
we have criticality, we have some threat intelligence. What else can we use? Let's add another metric and see how it changes the equation. Let's talk about exposure. We'll define exposure as the degree to which an asset, an asset is exposed to malicious attacks. Now, my Ferrari is parked in my garage. The garage is closed, it's attached to my house. My house is locked and it has an alarm system. It sounds pretty safe. My Honda Civic is parked in the driveway. Now, I know this will depend on the type of neighborhood that we live in, but I know that I have left my car unlocked with the keys inside overnight in my driveway in more than one occasion, and my car made it to the next day. Now, according to the threat intelligence that I have gathered, <clears throat> in 2020, LA had the most car thefts by pure volume. We're talking over 63,000 car thefts in LA. The second place city was probably about half of that. That car part downtown still runs, downtown LA. It can still take me from point A to point B. It may be a little bit aerodynamic, but it still, still operates, still runs. So how long do we think the car will last? maybe 30 minutes? Well, we're in a little bit of a pickle here, right? We got three different metrics and they point us in three different directions. So again, how do we manage this? Now this slide is meant to generate some debate. That is the point. It's here to tell you that prioritizing just on vulnerability severity is not enough. And even when you add additional factors, you need to define a mechanism that can take these factors and help you identify where to focus your efforts first. So what is remediation management? <clears throat> we'll define it as a process that is used to address threats and vulnerabilities detected in information assets while applying greater focus to those where probable damage is greatest. There are two words that I like to draw your attention to, and those are probable damage. You should recognize this as a definition of risk, which is a product of probability times impact. So with this in mind, we can now call remediation management, the process that is used to address threats and vulnerabilities using a risk-based approach, probable damage. In order to properly address where you focus your efforts, you need to understand the level of risk that you're dealing with. And that is the probability that a threat actor is going to exploit a vulnerability on an asset and also the impact or the damage that that event could cause. Now, based on that, I would love to hear your thoughts on which of the three vehicles from the last example would pose the greatest risk. There's no right or wrong answer. I just would love to hear your thoughts. Now, where does the advanced part come from in remediation management? And what does it mean? Well, let's add it to the definition and see how things change. We can define advanced remediation management as a structure process. And what structure means is something that will be common and repeatable, that has documentation that there are defined roles and responsibilities. So a structure process that is used to address threats and vulnerabilities while applying a risk-based approach. We're going to expand the definition of address to include evaluating, assigning, tracking, measuring, 
and reporting activities that are used to treat these threats and vulnerabilities. And again, we're still going to be following that using a risk-based approach. Let's take a look at the methodology. On this slide, I will introduce the R methodology at a high level, and we'll review the major components. But in the next slide, I will walk through a simple playbook, and that's when we'll go into a little bit more detail about how this methodology is applied. Your threat and vulnerability management process will start with discovery. You need to understand and identify the assets that you care about, and you may have, or will likely have, more than one way to discover vulnerabilities. You could have a vulnerability scanning tool that produces scan results. You might go directly to vulnerability databases and gather vulnerabilities from there. You might have different um, uh, assessments that produce different types of findings like penetration tests, application security assessments and the like. You might have an incident and as part of the incident response process, you will have some findings that uh, will point to root causes and you need to address those. You might have vendors directly producing advisories that will alert you to vulnerabilities in their products. You might have a threat intelligence or threat hunting team that will be looking for the next emerging threats. In either case, you can have more than one ways to discover vulnerabilities. And once you have assets and vulnerabilities discovered, there needs to be a risk-based analysis performed. In our car example, we use factors such as asset criticality, asset exposure, threat intelligence. There could be others, but you would want to minimally include those three in your analysis so that you can get the threat intelligence in the business context. How you combine those may be unique for different organizations, but it typically involves the assignment of weights for each of those factors to come up with some kind of risk score. There are tools that facilitate and even automate the process of analysis. Some may use their own formula. Some will allow you to customize and define your own. Now that takes us to the response step. I'm gonna use the same four options that I defined earlier. How you respond to it? Well, you can either apply a patch if it's available, you can apply a known remediation solution if the vulnerability is not patchable and there are recommended remediations. You can also look for alternate mitigations, compensating controls, anything that can minimize the risk while the solution is being developed. Or you can ultimately do nothing and accept the risk. If you choose one of the two middle options, you need to carefully evaluate your solution to make sure that it's not going to introduce additional impacts into your environment. And you need to prepare your environment for it before it's implemented. Finally, we would not be successful without some level of governance around this process. And we'll define that as coordination and guidance, tracking and escalation, metrics and reporting, and stakeholder management. Okay, let's walk through a simple remediation playbook. This is gonna help us highlight how advanced remediation methodology can be implemented. I call this a simple playbook because you can expand this and make it more complex. You can inject more processes into it. You can inject more decision boxes. We're gonna keep it simple for the purposes of this presentation. First, we start with sources of vulnerabilities. You need to find a source. You need to be able to triage and prioritize those using some level of risk-based approach. Once you have your prioritized list of findings, they need to be assigned to a, a task owner, right? Or, or to an owner. The remediation task or remediation activities need to be assigned to an owner. That owner or group needs to perform 
some level of technical risk assessment. How can they remediate this? Is it patchable? If it's not patchable, then you move to the remediation decision box. Is there a remediation that is known, that is available? If the answer is no, then you look for alternate mitigation or alternate compensating controls. Is there something we can do that can reduce the risk? And you can either reduce the risk by reducing the probability of it happening or the impact of it happening. Ultimately, if you consider the, the risk to be low enough, you can decide to do nothing and accept the risk. Let's go back to the patchable scenario. If this vulnerability is patchable, then you need to determine if it's urgent enough. If the patchable is available and it's urgent enough, then you may decide to go and implement an out-of-band patch and follow a process for that. If it's not, and it can wait until the next patch cycle, then address it with the next standard patch cycle. If the vulnerability needs to be remediated or mitigated, that means there's a technical solution, possibly a process solution needs to be implemented. In either case, if you choose one of those two middle options, you need to carefully evaluate this solution, whether it's a remediation solution or mitigation solution, to make sure that it's not going to introduce additional impacts into your environment. You need to prepare your environment if it will introduce some impacts before it's implemented. So how do we address that? Okay, we start with solution engineering. Here, you need to review the recommendations that were provided, and you need to conduct some level of analysis on them to help you define the solution that you're going to implement, which should be the one that fits your organization the best. Once you've decided on the solution that you'll implement, you need to conduct some level of testing. Here, whether it's system, functional, perhaps a pilot group, you need to identify potential impact scenarios. This is something that you could introduce into the environment with your solution that can cause more problems, more impacts. If you identify some, you need to identify how you can mitigate those impacts now, the level of effort, perhaps exception scenarios for those assets that cannot comply with your remediation. Environment readiness. If you have identified any impact scenarios, then this is where you address those impacts before you implement the solution. This could be a technical or a procedural step. For example, you might need new hardware. You might need a tool or a product. You might need some code changes. You might need to define a new process. Anything that will help you minimize the impact of your solution. Solution implementation is where you implement that remediation or mitigation solution following your change management process. In the post remediation triage step, you need to be prepared to address any issues that you did not anticipate or any assets that you could not identify, right? That can quickly and efficiently be dealt with. So your post-implementation triage, triage plan needs to be needs to be tight and needs to be efficient. Okay. So what about the governance part of advanced remediation management? Under coordination and guidance, this is where the assignment of the tasks to the responsible individuals are, are done. Also researching vulnerabilities and mitigations providing guidance and education, all of that to the technical teams. Potentially um, documented vulnerabilities or even alternate mitigations or techniques can be discussed. For tracking and escalation, you need to keep track of missed SLAs. You need to monitor progress and status on remediation activities. And you need to escalate if there's critical issues that are not being addressed. 
on the reporting and metrics, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. We talked about that. So you want to define what metrics are relevant to show effectiveness of your efforts. You also need to show the constantly moving risk exposure and you need to publish those so that the stakeholders that need to access them can get to them. And finally, we get to stakeholder management. You need to know who your stakeholders are and what role they play in your success. Once you identify them, you need to manage those relationships. You need to understand what you need from them and what they need from you, which leads me to the communication aspect of things. Communication is an art in itself, but you need to determine how often to communicate, what information to communicate, to which stakeholders and in what form. Do you do it daily, weekly, monthly? Do you do it via phone call, status emails, or perhaps monthly briefings? Okay. We have come to the end of the presentation, and I hope that you found this useful and informative. In summary, you obtain a refresher on some basic definitions related to assets, vulnerabilities, threats, threat actors, exploits, and risk. You've also received an overview of what remediation management is which we defined as a process to address threats and vulnerabilities using a risk-based approach. And finally, you've gained an understanding of, of the R methodology, which really includes a remediation playbook and an engineering methodology to carefully evaluate your complex solutions and address impacts prior to implementation. It also includes governance that you can use to provide coordination and guidance for technical teams, the tracking or the statusing and progress um, of remediation activities and the escalation of risks and issues. There's definition of metrics, the ability to report them and stakeholder management to ensure the success of your program. Thank you very much for attending today's session and we are now open for questions.